Hello my viewers, I've been getting tons of requests asking me to do a video on pressure controls. And I would like to, hey wait a minute, whoa! And here's a high pressure switch right here. It measures the discharge pressure of the compressor. This particular high pressure switch resets itself automatically when the pressure goes back down to safe uh, operating pressures. And here we have another high pressure switch. The big difference between this high pressure switch and this high pressure switch is that this high pressure switch is manually resettable. So when it does trip out, somebody actually has to come along and press this button which will reset the pressure switch so that the compressor will come on again. Now here in our suction line we have a pressure switch which is a low pressure switch so when the refrigerant level gets down to when the system is running or not running whichever and if the system is too low to operate which could cause damage to the compressor this switch will open up inside and it will disrupt the control voltage from energizing the compressor contactor. Okay, here's a, a pressure switch that opens and closes uh, automatically depending on the pressure on the low side. For example, this one is set up to actually open at 40 PSIG. Okay, now this particular control right here, it's called a low ambient control or low ambient fan control to be more exact. It controls the condensing fan motor. This isn't really so much of a safety control as it, what it does is it allows you to run the air conditioner when it's still rather cool outside, like 60 degrees or so when you normally wouldn't run your air like in your home, but this is a commercial application anyway. What this does is it senses the head pressure and it turns the fan on or off depending on what the head pressure is. I have this set up to where it'll run at about 225, meaning the fan, the condensing fan will not cut in until it gets to about 225 PSIG. And this is our 22 by the way. In a commercial application such as a school building, you would need this particular fan control because there are times when it's still cool outside, but your heat load is so great with all the computers and all the students inside that you'll still need to run the air conditioner when it's rather cool outside. You can't just open up the windows uh, which, you know, we used to do in the good old days, but uh, a lot of times the windows are all locked up tight and can't be opened unless it's an absolute emergency. So this is this will allow you to run the air conditioner when it's still rather cool outside. Okay, also in uh, commercial applications you'll have a high pressure switch like this one that is resettable manually by pressing this button here. And at this one you can set up to go out at right about any pressure you'd like. This one I have set up to go out at about um, 375. It's because it might seem a little on the high side, but this is a uh, fresh air uh, air conditioning system that I have this hooked up to. It's connected. It's actually piped in right here to the high side right here on, uh, on this uh, semi-hermetic compressor. Here's what this high pressure switch looks like with the cover off. And you see here's the reset button right here. You just manually reset it if it ever trips out. If this switch in here opens, then that will 
open the connection between these two wires and the compressor contactor will not energize. Okay, now let's take a look at this high pressure control. Uh, this one right here allows you to set up the cutout at a certain pressure and the cut in at a pressure. So you see, right now I have this one set up so that it cuts out at about 375 PSI G and the cut in whereas if it cut for example if it cuts out at 375 PSI G then it'll settle down and then when the pressure drops down to uh, where I have it set up here which is at uh, let's see at about 225 PSI G then it'll cut back in again and as you notice, this one does not have a manual reset. It's because it automatically resets itself. Uh, I'm having some other problems with right here with this uh, pressure protector. It's, I hate the way they hide these things, but anyway, this one's burned up. I gotta put, replace that. And these compressor protectors, uh, I don't know why they stick them inside of these uh, areas like that. It's ridiculous. Right here, we hardly get to them. Okay, see what we have here? It's a electronic motor protector. You'll usually find these all tucked away down inside this control box. Like in uh, most uh, uh, Copeland uh, semi-hermetic compressors, like this one right here. Um, so what I gotta do, so now what I have to do is I have to replace this uh, motor protector. Okay, here's another protection device right here. This is an oil switch. Now these oil switches are usually found in uh, commercial sized applications, like uh, semi-hermetic compressors especially. Anyways, what it, the way it works is pretty simple. Uh, it, it, there's uh, uh, two tubes that are connected here directly to the uh, refrigeration cycle at the, at the compressor, at the oil pump. If this, there's no uh, pressure difference between the, the pump and the compressor crankcase, then it sees that there's probably uh, no lubrication being done to the compressor and, and a switch in here will open up and which will then not allow the control voltage to pass through. Here's an oil pressure switch that works much the same as the one that resets on its own. This one though is a manual reset. See, so this is a little bit different. 